Buyer beware. Buying model steam engines via a photograph on the internet, part 3. Saving the best until last. What's wrong with this steam engine? It's got quite a nicely made governor. All of the engine is very well engineered. So what's wrong with it? Well, it's a bar stock engine. I have a personal dislike for engines that are fabricated using bar stock. It's not easy to do, it's quite difficult to do, it's much easier to machine a casting in many applications. This engine really is nicely made. I don't much like the Allen cap head bolts. So I think really what I need to do is oil it and give it a run. Maybe I'll even get to like it. So here we go, the compressed air is connected and... There's a problem with the slide valve. It's exhausting at the end of each stroke. And it has a bit of a clunk. I don't wish to level any criticism whatsoever about the builder's ability with this engine, because as I said earlier, it's very well made. But there is a problem with the geometry of the slide valve over the ports. And once again, you cannot see or hear the problems from a photograph. Here's another steam engine that was bought via the internet, and it's um, not very good. As you'll see in a moment, this engine is incomplete. But not incomplete as in part finished. Incomplete as in parts missing. So what's wrong with it? Well, the paint job's not very good, the base is just a piece of rough wood, and the machine finish of the flywheel could be a lot better. But the main thing is, where's the steam chest? What's going on here? Why is the steam chest not attached to the engine? Whenever I see models where the bolts that hold the cylinder cladding on are in this position, not in line and roughly fitted, it's usually the tip of the iceberg, and it's very true with this engine, which once again is a bar stock engine. The flywheel is cast, but that's about it. And the other problem is, this is designed to use a piston valve block. And in my humble opinion, the engine is too rough, not very well made, and the part that is missing could be difficult to manufacture for a beginner. The next engine I'm going to show wasn't bought via the internet. So why am I showing this in a video all about buying off the internet? Well, it's a little bit like a lemon sorbet between courses. It's just here to refresh my visual palette before the final offering. This is a freelance steam pump that was built by my friend Don English, and it really does run very well. This is not built from castings though, it's fabricated. So you could say it's a bar stock engine, and it may seem like a contradiction in terms because I don't like bar stock engines, but I don't mind them if they're fabricated like this one is, where the parts are silver soldered together before the machine. And saving the best or worst till last, here is a Stuart Victoria. This was bought by a friend of mine via the internet auction site that we all know and love. My friend lives right down in the south of England, and this engine was bought via the internet auction site that I've just mentioned from Morley, which is very near to where I live. And when he bought this engine, it wouldn't work at all, and he was puzzled, so he brought it up to me on one of his visits. One viewer commented on the last video and said, well, it's all really down to the honesty of the seller, but in this case, this wasn't the case. When my friend was here visiting me, he phoned the seller and we arranged a meeting. He'd bought two engines from the same seller, so we thought, well, it would be a good idea to see whether he could explain himself as to why they were so bad. So in due course, the seller arrived in my workshop. And the seller of these engines was definitely not dishonest. There weren't barn finds, they weren't left to him by his great-grandfather. And from my experience, I don't think he was lying. He was genuinely upset about the whole thing. And he refunded the purchase price to my friend. At the time, I just had a cursory glance at this engine, and it didn't look too good. First of all, it was painted in mammod green with a red flywheel, which is never a good thing for a bigger engine than a mammod. And I thought it would make a good subject for a rebuild video, so I bought it off him at what I consider to be a fair price. And I thought it would be a really good subject for a steam engine rebuild video. This, by the way, is the piston rod. The saw cut must have been an optional extra. 
When I removed the cylinder from the bed plate, this is what I found. Holes drilled in the wrong place. Not good, but not the end of the world either. The cylinder port face left a bit to be desired. The finish is not brilliant, but that can be put right quite easily. The steam chest is nicely made, the holes are drilled in the right place, so it's not all bad news. Likewise, the steam chest cover is a good fit on the steam chest itself. All the studs fit through all of the holes, which is good. Yes, the steam chest looks serviceable. The cylinder brackets are a bit of a puzzle. One is longer than the other. Now, I wonder why. Obviously, with the two holes drilled in the bed plate, there's been some sort of a problem here. The cylinder covers are not too good. The holes are a little bit randomly drilled around the outside edge. Here's a clue. It looks like the cylinder is in the wrong position. This is one of the crosshead blocks, and the hole is supposed to be in the middle. That was the first thing I spotted externally when I looked at the engine. But it's not rocket science, it's an easy fix. The guide bars are not the same length as each other, and they don't fit very well on the studs. One side is very slack, and the other side is very tight. Which, not unsurprisingly, reminds me of a girlfriend that I used to have. These parts are very easy to make. After all, they're only pieces of square bar with a tiny bit of machining and some holes drilled in them. As I mentioned earlier, the man who I bought this engine from wasn't dishonest and he really knew nothing about them. And in my opinion, the person who built this engine in the first place probably knew just as much as the seller. This is a connecting rod and it's wrong. I haven't checked it against the drawing for length, but this end of it is wrong. This is supposed to be fish bellied. Long rods that transmit power on steam engines are always thicker in the middle and thinner at each end, and if you think about it, it makes sense. If the connecting rod is thicker in the middle, it's less likely to bend in the middle. But this one is wrong, it's more or less parallel and then tapers towards the small end. Using the fish belly principle, it makes the rod lighter, but it still has maximum strength in the centre and the machining standard of the forked end of the connecting rod leaves a lot to be desired. This component is very visible on the finished model, so leaving it like this would just be horrible. I noticed this immediately, and made a mental note to throw it in the bin. The small end is okay, but I really think that I would make a new connecting rod if I decide to rebuild this engine. Things like this are very visible on any photograph, so it's a good idea to spend a lot of time looking at close details on the photographs to make sure that you're not going to buy a pup. Not that I have anything against dogs. Let's have a closer look at the cylinder, shall we? I did say I was going to save the best until last, and here it is. Whoever built this engine had no concept of how a steam engine works, and they'd managed to mill the slots all the way down into the cylinder. Now this is the first time ever I've seen this, and when I saw it, it made me laugh. And to add insult to injury, there are random holes drilled around the flange of the cylinder where they've been drilled in the wrong place. And once again, the special feature of this engine are the see-through steam ports. My first instinct is just to throw away the cylinder. The cylinder bore's okay, but it's no good at all, with two holes machined in the centre of it. This is an ideal opportunity for a major league bodge. Should I plug up the holes in the cylinder using JB Weld, then reassemble the engine and put it back on eBay and wait until the bids come in? I would of course paint the engine a different colour so it wasn't recognisable. I once bought a steam engine via the auction site that we all know and love, and when I got it the paint was still wet. I thought, what's that smell? Oh dear, the paint's wet. And then I realised why. It had been very badly put back together and just daubed in paint to cover up all the mess. And when I look at the photographs online of engines for sale, I frequently see badly made, freshly painted engines, which don't fool me, but they will fool most people at first glance. I'm not infallible, I make mistakes, and I make mistakes sometimes when I buy from the internet. But it's all part of life's rich tapestry, and it's a very good learning curve. There are no flies on me, only the marks where they've been. If you've watched this video and the other two, I hope it's given you some information that you will find useful if you're about to buy a model steam engine via the auction sites on the internet. Buyer beware, the world is full of trickery. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.